Okay, so now it's been about four weeks since we put the nematodes in the soil. And I don't know how long I, I should wait to expect results from the nematodes, but I'm thinking that after four weeks we should start seeing some results. So let's see how that's going with the hive, see how the honey super is doing. And last time, if you remember, I got stung a few times before I even had the first frame removed. So let's see if my bees are a little nicer to me today. I brought my suit just because I learned from the past that sometimes you might think that your bees are going to be nice to you and uh, be proven wrong. Ooh, that one got right on my hand right away. So I don't know if they're going to be mean today or what, but that bee definitely checked me out real quick there. Someone told me there, there's a dearth of nectar and so they think that might be part of why the bees are pretty readily stinging me last time. I don't know. I hope they're nicer today because it sure is better to work the bees without having to wear all that equipment. Because it is about 90 degrees outside right now and it's very humid. This is their biggest frame of honey. I don't expect to see any problems in the honey super. They've been doing okay as far as uh, avoiding problems goes. Um, but they're really not making a lot of progress here. So what they're saying about that dearth of pollen and nectar seems like it might be true. Pop that open. Put some smoke through there. And there was kind of an itch when that bee landed on my hand there when I first opened up the honey super. So I'm not sure if she tried to sting me and just didn't succeed or if uh, or what that was. But See how far I can get with this before I get lit up. <clears throat> so in my in the beginning, my videos were all focused right on the hive and you couldn't see much other than just the hive and I pull out the frames you couldn't even see the frames because I was holding them up in the air trying to look for eggs and things like that so we're trying a different camera angle as of last time and this time so that maybe I could show you some frames and you could see a little bit more of what's going on but to answer our first question, what's going on with these traps? So as I said in earlier videos, I noticed that it's easier To get these beetle traps out if you pry up the frame okay so not sure how well you can see that I'm just gonna bring it close to the camera 
and uh, there's about four beetles in that trap so don't know if that means anything but it's an improvement from what we found last time which is like a dozen of them Oh, I forgot to smoke my hands. <laughs> like I said before, I don't know if smoking my hands or my clothing or whatever else actually makes a difference, but it is believed by many beekeepers that if you smoke your hands, then that discourages the bees from wanting to sting you. I did that last video and they stung me a lot. Well, relatively speaking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's only seven beetles in this trap. So, I mean, that is an improvement in both traps, technically, so maybe the nematodes are slowly improving things. But now let's see if I could get into the hive and maybe find the queen before I get stung. Trying to clear these guys out because then I can pull up this thing. Some bees are kind of bouncing off me, and it's potentially a unfriendly sign. Okay. So there's nothing going on here, and what I should have done was put in my little frame holder. Sorry, bees. Yeah, but it is there we go. So just from the little cursory look that I took, I did not find the queen. By the way, and this is just another thing that I heard that I'm not sure how true it is. I read that seeing festooning bees is a sign of friendly bees because that kind of goes hand in hand with the uh, the nectar idea. Um, in the spring, the bees are supposed to be friendlier. In the summertime, they can get a little mean, is, is what I read. Mostly because they're trying to preserve what resources they have. Uh, so they're more defensive of those resources. Lots of nice, solid brood here. I'll try to make sure I'm showing this stuff to you guys. That would be kind of stupid of me to like, 
accidentally walk all the way over here with the queen and like accidentally drop her on the ground or something but this one if I show you on this side it's pretty solid with the brood so that was frame two this is frame three I'm putting in here in this order and the bees they always kind of like to you get propolis on your fingers and they're always like to sniff you out so you end up with bees on your fingers Another little belief of mine when it comes to friendly bees or whatnot is um, when I was separating the frames last time, I did a lot of like pushing it with the with the hive tool before I lifted them up, and I wonder if having my hive tool that deep into the center was kind of setting them off. Is there a queen? I mean, there's gotta be a queen or I'd be lit up right now, but, because the last time we were wondering about if there's a queen, because <laughs> of how mean they were, I said, well, if the queen isn't here, then maybe she only has a she's been gone for such a short time that they're not fully realizing that she's not there but I don't see the queen here doesn't mean she's not there it just means I failed to spot her More, eh, pretty solid brood, though the pattern has a lot of holes in it. Um, when the bee inspector was looking, she was starting to wonder if that meant that maybe we were starting to get mites. So watch out, bees. Watch out. Try not to crush them down here, but... so many of them there's like a I don't know there's like six of them on my hands at one point there what I'm gonna try to do is pull out that uh, beetle trap this bee I'm trying to smoke her off my hand so to do that, I'm going to have to remove this little jar here first. Just put that down, maybe sideways in case there's bees underneath. And now, there's a little tricky thing that we got to do. Where we're probably going to whack a few bees in the process. getting caught there hmm around, yeah I'm moving their beetle trap and you know so I'm probably rolling the bees around down there they probably don't like that too much <laughs> oh, 
Yeah. Well, the good thing about the super is there seem to be. Yeah, I remember you suggesting that earlier. Uh, So now that What do you say? That was not a good thing. <laughs> what? Yeah, the beetle traps didn't want to come out. So I'm trying to pick it up from the other side and I dropped it back in the hive and it whacked the honeycomb. So I was like, that's not good. Since we have those other beetle traps, I figure this thing is not all that necessary. down here okay good news guys I pulled out three three frames so far without getting stung <laughs> so that's already three times better than last week okay so In case you guys are wondering, I know that sometimes you might not hear what's on the microphone. Uh, Dan was asking me if I jarred it, and I explained to him I dropped the little beetle trap, and as it fell, it hit the comb actually. So that could definitely irritate some bees. How'd that happen? I don't know, I was swimming here and the bee must have been in the water. Sunny <laughs> So if you guys uh, didn't hear that, Dan was swimming in the water and he got stung over there. So bizarre. Look, you can see what how many bees are on my hand right now. And I just think it's so strange that they stung him. So I had to single-handedly grab this frame because there's way too many bees on the edge here. And I do my best not to Kill a bee. Which is definitely tricky at best. Yeah. <sighs> 
Yeah, so... Basically, it looks like the queen's doing an alright job. It does look like there's less beetles in the traps. I'm just gonna put these things back. Put new traps in and just call it a day so that we don't leave their hive open too long. Haven't found the queen yet, but I've seen a pretty good brood pattern. Uh, I might want to do a mite check on them in the future. If not, just kind of do some uh, some oxalic acid just uh, precautionary because there's a, a bit of a there's a bit of a little holes in the in the comb which doesn't necessarily mean anything but it could mean that perhaps mites are getting them I haven't seen mites on the bees uh, well that actually might be one oops I breathed on the bees anyway Now the only downside I'm starting to see now is have all this, as far as working without the gloves and stuff, is I have all this propolis on my hands. The bees want to get it, so they're just all over my hands. And the advantage is, since I know the bees are there, I'm not killing them when I go to put things back where I found them and such. But the disadvantage is uh, I have to be super careful not to crush a bee in my hand or they might decide to uh, sting me. So I'm just going to grab this puppy. Oops. It's almost like a family feud question. What's a question, or what's a phrase you don't want to hear a surgeon say? And it's probably something like, oops. <laughs> what's a word you don't want to hear a beekeeper say? Probably the same thing. All right, now we have this tricky process. of trying to put the queen excluder on without killing the bees. Actually, I still need to put the traps in. There's how buzz butt is. My butt is of buzz.
In case you guys don't know, the queen's name is Melissa. And bonus points to you if you could tell me why her name is Melissa. Leave your answer in the comment section if you know why Queen Melissa's name is Melissa. Oops, I did get stung. I almost made it through that whole one without getting stung. Uh, weirdly though, I think she got away without her st with her stinger. <laughs> okay. All right, so now for the queen excluder part. And these bees are doing their best to get killed by the queen excluder. This is never perfect, but I tried valiantly not to kill any bees.
There's another good reason not to kill bees is if you end up with enough dead bees on the edge. Then you won't be able to seal it down well enough. <laughs> and all sorts of bugs can start bothering them. And now I like the entrance to be as reduced as it was with the jar. They can adapt even if it were as wide as it currently is. But in nature, whenever I used to do hive removals, I noticed that they always have a very small hole, sometimes so small that hardly a bee can fit through at a time. And those hives, where barely a bee fits through at a time, single file. Some of them were like 10 feet across and five feet deep with uh, comb after comb. And like a nest that's been there for years and just thrives. So that's why I choose to reduce the entrance a little. All right, so that's everything I have for today. Uh, basically, uh, if there's one takeaway from this video, I would say is that after four weeks of having the nematodes down, it does seem like we're starting to see an improvement in how many beetles we're finding in the traps. We'll only find out for sure in the following weeks if we start seeing fewer and fewer beetles, and hopefully none. If not, I have a hypothesis that those nematodes, they, they can't exp uh, tolerate more than 100 degrees so one idea is that if these nematodes aren't working as they should maybe I need to order them in a cooler season of the year because they could have died you know on the delivery truck getting here sitting in a vehicle too long well that's all I have for today so like I said the question is why is Queen Melissa's name Melissa Give me your best guess in the comment section. I'll tell you if you're correct. Thanks for watching and participating.